At 8.31 a.m. on July 27th, a fire broke out at a JD appliance store in Zhongba Town, Jiangyou City, Sichuan Province. Videos posted online show thick smoke billowing from the scene, accompanied by the sound of explosions. Locals reported that it was an appliance store on the ground floor with a hotel above it. There was a strong smell of burning plastic, and the explosions were likely caused by the appliances burning in the store. According to a report from the Mianyang Fire Brigade, after the fire started, the staff immediately evacuated people from the hotel upstairs. Two people were injured and sent to the hospital, but their lives are not in danger. Some people said the fire started on the second floor in the hotel, but the exact cause is still under investigation. Netizens commented saying, Here we go again, it's Sutron again. The Zugong department store fire first happened and no lessons were learned. The government's fire safety inspections are just for show, only collecting money. Just 10 days earlier, on July 17th, a fire at the Juding department store in Zugong, Sutran, resulted in 16 deaths and 39 injuries. Initial investigations suggest the fire was caused by construction work, but details are still being investigated. Recently, China has been experiencing continuous high temperatures, entering a peak period for fires. Reports of fires have been coming in from various provinces and cities. On July 31st, a fire broke out at a water park under construction in Bishan, Chongqing. The scene was filled with thick black smoke, resembling a winding dragon of fire. According to people at the scene, the fire was caused by welding work. Fortunately, there were no injuries. On the afternoon of July 29th, a tire factory caught fire in Wangqingtuo town, Wuqing district, Tianjin. Video showed black smoke rising tens of meters into the sky, with flames visible, causing a dramatic scene. An employee at the Wuqing District Emergency Management Bureau explained that the fire started in the tire factory's warehouse, which is why the smoke was black. The fire has been brought under control, and no one was injured. The cause of the fire is still being investigated. After the fire, the factory was reduced to ruins. Following these incidents, the Chinese government started its usual stability maintenance operations. Many bloggers who posted videos from the scene received private messages or phone calls from local authorities, warning them to delete the videos. One Edison commented, They told us to delete them, saying there were no casualties and it would cause panic and have a bad impact. Another netizen mentioned that they worked nearby and had posted the entire process of the fire. Government officials sent a private message asking them to delete it, warning that if they didn't, the police station would contact them. On July 30th, a factory in Harbin caught fire, producing black smoke that made firefighting efforts very challenging. On July 27th, a side street shop in Yuanchang Plaza, Nan'an, Fujian, caught fire. According to netizens, the shop was a ginseng and deer antler store. People were especially worried about the electric bicycle shop next door, fearing a potential catastrophe if the fire spread. On July 31st, a shop in Chili Garden, Nanyang, Henan, caught fire. At noon on July 30th, a physical explosion occurred in the triazole workshop of Xiangshuo Chemical in Hunan, causing two deaths and one minor injury. The cause of the accident is under investigation. Due to the CCP's habit of concealing the truth, the authenticity of the reported data is often questioned. Someone from a nearby company reported, I heard a loud bang during lunch and thought it was an earthquake. Another nearby resident said, The shock blew open the office doors. Public information shows that Xiangshuo Chemical in Hunan was established in the 1990s, employing over 200 people. The company mainly produces triazole intermediate products for pesticides, with an annual production of 15,000 tons. On July 30th, a video circulated online showing what appeared to be a gas explosion in a restaurant. An old building was heavily damaged, with the roof collapsed and debris everywhere. The number of casualties is unknown. Recently, Ms. Chen from Xiu Shui Shan Villa in Hangzhou, Zhejiang, returned from an 11-day trip with her husband to find that their carefully decorated villa had caught fire. The property management did nothing, leaving her devastated. According to local media, on June 30th, Ms. Chen and her husband went on a trip. Because their refrigerator contained fruits and vegetables, they didn't turn off the main power switch. Before leaving, she specifically asked the property manager to take extra care of their home during their absence, and the manager agreed. From the surveillance footage, Ms. Chen saw that the fire started in a small room on the first floor. Smoke began to appear on the evening of July 1st, and the fire continued until 9 a.m. the next day. The house was filled with smoke for 10 days. The walls of the small room were blackened, and the area where the TV was mounted was severely burned. 
they only discovered the damage when they returned home on the afternoon of July 10th. Ms. Chen said, When I came in, everything was black. There wasn't a single bright spot. I was completely devastated at that moment. The house was renovated in 2011, and it cost over 2 million yuan, about 280,000 U.S. dollars. The renovation was really top-notch. According to fire professionals, the likely cause was a set-top box falling and creating a spark that ignited the plastic cover on a mahjong table. After the incident, Ms. Chen first approached the property management company for an explanation. They responded by saying that security patrols every two hours, but the view of her house was blocked by trees, so they didn't see anything. Regarding the attitude of the property management company, Ms. Chen expressed her frustration. The security booth is just 50 meters away from my house, but it's practically useless since no one is ever there. I pay over 10,000 yuan a month in property fees, yet the management is so irresponsible. The fire burned for 15 hours without anyone noticing? If my house were burglarized or some other emergency happened, could I rely on such a property management company? The ongoing heat wave has not only caused fires, but also tested electric vehicles, which are prone to spontaneous combustion. Recently, several incidents of electric vehicles catching fire have been reported across China. On July 29th, a truck loaded with electric vehicles caught fire on the highway. From a distance, thick smoke was visible, and up close, the truck was engulfed in flames. Dozens of electric vehicles on the truck were almost completely burned, and people were concerned about the driver's safety. On August 1st, two electric vehicles caught fire simultaneously in a parking lot in Sichuan. In the comments, people identified the one on the left as a Huawei SF5 and the one on the right as an NIO ES6. The cause of the fire is unknown. Although firefighters arrived, it seems unlikely they could do much. Unexpectedly, even the popular new model Porsche Cayenne, which was just launched in March, experienced spontaneous combustion. On July 31st, a Xiaomi SU7 caught fire, with smoke billowing from the front. The owner quickly used a fire extinguisher, but it's unclear if the fire was completely put out. Those who have pre-ordered the new Xiaomi car, which won't be available for another six months, might be reconsidering their choice after seeing this video. On the morning of July 31st, around 8 a.m., an electric vehicle caught fire near the Danshui toll station on the Shenshan Expressway. There were no firefighters on the scene. Many netizens commented that once an electric car catches fire, it's impossible to save. It just has to burn itself out. Others noted that with the increasing popularity of electric vehicles, such incidents will likely become more common. On July 31st, an electric vehicle caught fire in a residential area in Shenyang, and an SUV parked nearby started to smoke from the heat. Fortunately, the owner arrived in time to drive the car away, preventing it from catching fire. On July 30th, an electric vehicle caught fire on the street. People were not surprised anymore. Unfortunately, it was reported that the driver did not escape in time. Some described electric vehicles as mobile crematoriums. On July 31st, another electric vehicle caught fire with someone inside who couldn't escape. On July 25th, in the early morning at a Chengdu toll station, an electric car caught fire after a collision, leaving no survivors. The video shows massive flames lighting up the night sky, engulfing the vehicle to the point where its shape is barely recognizable. Netizens commented that China's new energy vehicles not only take people's money, but also their lives. One person said, Accidents aren't reported, so uninformed people keep buying electric cars, which then keep burning people alive. It never ends. On July 20th, a ride-hailing car lost control and crashed into a flower bed. The battery pack fell off and exploded. One netizen remarked that it was fortunate the battery fell off, otherwise both the driver and the car would have been doomed. In addition to spontaneous combustion while driving, electric cars catching fire during charging is even more common. Older electric cars are particularly prone to fires due to aging wiring or battery faults, and poor quality chargers may have design flaws or manufacturing issues that cause them to catch fire during use. Electric car fires are notoriously difficult to extinguish. On July 25th, a BYD Tong caught fire while charging. Nearby security guards and a passerby quickly grabbed fire extinguishers, but their efforts were futile. The fire spread quickly, consuming the entire car, which was eventually reduced to a skeleton. On July 31st, a Hongqi electric car started smoking and then caught fire after its chassis hit a manhole cover. Flames shot out from the bottom of the car. The video shows two fire trucks on the scene, but they were unable to do much, only managing to contain the fire to a certain extent. 
On the same day, in Jilin, another Hongqi electric car caught fire while driving. The situation was particularly urgent due to the presence of many nearby vehicles. Hongqi is China's premium car brand, often marketed as a symbol of national pride. However, it has been plagued with various safety issues. On January 31st last year, media reported that a Hongqi HS9 caught fire while charging. The video showed black smoke billowing, with flames shooting out from the chassis at the rear of the car, surrounded by thick smoke. The incident quickly went viral online. When asked about the self-combusting Hongqi, the official customer service replied, There is definitely no problem with Hongqi cars, as many have been sold. If a fire occurs, it might be due to a short circuit in the vehicle's wiring or an aging charging pile. It's worth noting that Hongqi cars have had numerous other quality complaints from owners. According to reports from China Net Auto Channel, Mr. Zhang, who owns a Hongqi EHS9, had to replace up to 10 parts within a year due to quality issues. The report said that Mr. Zhang bought the flagship version in August 2021 and replaced the central control screen, brake pads twice, wiper blades, two batteries, rear cross taillights, steering wheel, seat belts, gateway, luggage rack, and C-pillar panel within a year. Now headlights are fogged up again. The problem of overstated mileage is also a significant issue with this car. According to local media, the owner of a Hongqi EHS9 in Xi'an reported that his brand new car, priced at over 500,000 yuan, was supposed to have a range of 510 kilometers. However, after less than a month, the actual range was only a little over 200 kilometers. Ironically, at the end of 2022, during a global strategy launch for Hongqi's new energy vehicles, the brand announced a sales target of 1 million units by 2025, with 500,000 new energy vehicles, aiming for an annual growth of 138%. Netizens commented, Are they planning to challenge sales figures with such quality? Most Hongqi car buyers are driven by national sentiment. No amount of advertising can match consumer word of mouth. Quality should come first over any marketing strategy. Hopefully, Hongqi will focus more on improving quality. On July 30th, in Suzhou, Jiangsu, a Zeker 001 owner posted a video showing the car system displaying a message. Thermal runaway in the power battery. Please move away from the vehicle immediately. This Zeker 1 has already driven over 100,000 kilometers. The whole garage is filled with smoke and smells like oil. Luckily, it was discovered early, a little later, and would have burned up. I can no longer trust electric cars. I'm not driving this one anymore. At the end of the video, a traffic police officer appears to tell the owner to stop filming. One netizen commented, It's ironic that such public safety hazards are being covered up instead of transparently resolved. Under the CCP's dictatorship, the truth is always suppressed, and people's safety relies solely on luck. This governance style truly embodies serving the people. Since both the government and companies choose to remain silent, who will be responsible for public safety? On July 26, around 1.45 a.m., a fire broke out in the underground parking lot of a residential community in Changsha. The fire generated a lot of smoke, filling the entire parking lot. The fire destroyed dozens of electric vehicles and nine gas vehicles and nearly ignited the buildings. By around 3 a.m., the flames were extinguished, but the thick smoke persisted until around 6 a.m. Many vehicles were burned down to their frames, causing significant losses for the owners. The owners complained about having no avenue for complaints and unresolved compensation issues. Given the frequent self-combustion of electric vehicles, some suggest it would be best to park electric and fuel vehicles separately. A few days ago, an electric car caught fire in the underground parking lot of a residential area in Changsha, burning down dozens of cars and almost the entire building. I suggest that in the future, parking lots should have separate areas for electric and fuel cars. Electric cars should be parked in open areas with firewalls for separation. Since electric car fires are hard to extinguish, manufacturers should also be held accountable. Do you think this is reasonable? On July 28th, a car suddenly caught fire on a street in Tianjin and quickly burned down to an empty shell. According to the driver, the fire started unexpectedly while driving, beginning from the front of the car. It's unclear whether it was an electric or gas car, as the video did not specify, leading to much speculation among netizens. Gas cars can also catch fire in high temperatures due to aging wiring and other issues. In dry weather, trucks carrying flammable goods are also prone to catching fire. On July 30th, a truck caught fire. To avoid igniting nearby vehicles, the driver moved the burning truck to an open area which looked very dangerous. 
On July 31st, a truck caught fire at a highway entrance in Zhejiang, creating an intense blaze. Electric scooters catching fire in the summer is also quite common, seemingly able to happen anytime, anywhere. A young man was riding an electric scooter when he noticed sparks coming from the back seat. The entire scooter quickly caught fire. Fortunately, firefighters arrived in time to extinguish the blaze, but the scooter was already damaged. On July 29th, an electric bike shed at a factory in Anhui caught fire, engulfing the entire shed in flames. The poster of the video mentioned that their newly bought electric scooter was also burned. The fire was reportedly caused by numerous electric bikes charging simultaneously, though the exact cause remains unknown. Netizens believe that such concentrated charging stations are risky because if one bike catches fire, almost all of them will. In recent years, the Chinese government has aggressively promoted the so-called new energy industry, first replacing fuel-powered motorcycles with electric scooters, and more recently pushing electric cars as an alternative to gas cars. This shift is largely driven by government policies. Additionally, China has tried to export its surplus EVs globally. However, the development of the industry in China faces many unresolved issues. Overall, the industry faces significant challenges. Firstly, excessive government subsidies have led to a false sense of prosperity in the industry. Many EV companies faced financial crises and went bankrupt when subsidies were withdrawn. Secondly, the competition within the industry has become increasingly fierce, leading to severe market saturation. Few companies are profitable, with most still losing money. Thirdly, recent high tariffs imposed by Europe and the U.S. on Chinese EVs have greatly reduced their price advantage. Additionally, the cessation of subsidy policies in various countries has further hindered the industry's growth, making it difficult for Chinese electric cars to expand internationally. Industry experts predict that within the next one to two years, the Chinese electric vehicle industry might experience a collective blowout, leading to a significant downturn. Ultimately, the industry could become a failed project, with most companies struggling to survive. The situation will not only affect the companies involved, but it could also have far-reaching implications for the entire Chinese economy and social structure.